What's up guys, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video, I'm gonna share five quick tips for vertical video editing. So this is based on that new Instagram TV update that everyone's excited about. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me at Justin Odisho to keep in touch with me and see what I end up posting on there. Leave a like on this video and subscribe here on YouTube for more videos as well. And let's get started. So the first tip for vertical video is starting a vertical video sequence. So let's go to file, new sequence, and I'm gonna work off one of the default presets for DSLR. And instead of just pressing okay, let's actually head over to settings and change one thing. So instead of being a 16 by nine landscape, 1920 by 1080, let's change it to 1080 horizontal by 1920 vertical, basically flipping it on its side and creating a vertical video. Now, if you want, you can actually save this as a preset. You could call this vertical IG or whatever you want, and it'll show up as an available preset next time you go to create a sequence at the very bottom in the custom folder. So let's press OK. And tip number two is actually about orientation. So what happens when you drag a regular landscape video in here? You'll see that it says this clip does not match the sequence setting, and it'll ask you if you want to change the sequence settings. But if you just press keep existing, it'll fit that video in wherever it may. So if I head over to the effects control panel and increase the scale, I can crop the sides basically and create a full video, but it looks pretty zoomed in, pretty cropped. So this is something you'd have to account for if you do plan on shooting landscape. Whereas if you just shot vertically, you flip the camera over on its side, you would get an image that fits in there a lot more cleanly and it doesn't require much cropping or adjusting. So keep that in mind, but sometimes you do have a mix of both to work with. So let me give you another tip on making it work when you do have a variety of clips. If you right click on a clip, you can always set it back to frame size and it'll squeeze it back in. And let's say you do wanna keep it here, but you don't want the background to be just black. It looks kind of jarring. One thing you could do is duplicate this clip layer. So I can just hold option command and drag it up, or you could right click, copy paste, all that. And for the bottom one, I'm actually going to scale it up so that it fills in with a similarly colored background. And then if I head over to the effects panel and search for one called Gaussian blur, then I can use this common technique, you might recognize it, to fill in the background with something that looks like it's made based off of the image. So it fits a little bit better. It moves with the image. It's basically just a zoomed in blurry version of the image. You could also adjust the opacity if you want. So another thing that you can fill the background with if you don't want to do that, but you don't want black is go to file, new color mat, and you can use any solid color that you want. So if you want it to be a certain color of your branding and whatnot, if you press okay, it'll pop up in your project media bin and you can drag it in there as an object. Or you could go into Photoshop, create your own 1080 by 1920 graphics and insert them in just like that. Another way that you could choose to fill clips in is by rotating them on their side. So if you rotate them 90 degrees and then increase the size until they fit in there, then you have basically flipped the vertical video on its side, but obviously it wasn't shot with this in mind. So this might be difficult for your viewers. They, this is something where if you know you want them to turn the phone on its side when they're viewing, then you can do it this way. But just keep in mind that native content works better. So the fourth and fifth tips are about using this additional cropping that you have by scaling up your images to actually have some more information, create fake slider shots or panning shots or create fake scales, zoom ins or outs, kind of like a Ken Burns effect. So in this case, we have a nice building structure, it's vertically centered, but we still have all this extra information on the right and left hand side. So with some simple keyframes, I can create some fake movement. So first I could turn a keyframe on the position and move it over to the left a little bit, go to the end of this time lapse, and then move over to the right a little bit so that throughout this 10 seconds, we have a gradual movement. It's almost like we did a slider shot. Additionally, you can do the same thing with scale. So if I just delete what I just did there and do the same thing with scale, I can actually zoom in more than normally at the beginning of the clip and then zoom out to show a more wide angle shot. 
and that can be another way to make your time lapses or your videos have a little bit more life even photographs have a little bit more life in them because you do have that extra information being cropped out with those things in mind you can basically just continue to add clips and create your video however you like with your basic video editing principles that i share on many other videos in this channel lastly if you want to export you can just go to file export media and you can keep it at match source and it'll give you that same setting from the dslr preset that we based it off of a lot of people get really caught up on the quality for vertical video like it has to be 4k whatever instagram is going to compress it at the moment it's really not that big of a deal it still looks pretty good it's still watchable and it'll still work to spread your message share your video so if you do for some reason want to base it off one of these other presets uh, like the youtube 1080p or something just make sure you go back to the sizes and hit match source so it makes it 1080 by 1920 again and then you can use those other presets but once you export to wherever you want you should have it on your desktop ready to upload to instagram tv or something like that or mobile either by air dropping it to yourself uh, file transferring you know whatever type of phone and computer combo you have and i believe instagram is actually allowing you to upload from desktop so that might not be as big of an issue as it used to be so if you enjoyed this video on five vertical video editing tips definitely leave a like on below let me know what you thought in the comments if you have any tips of your own. And follow me on Instagram at Show to stay tuned with me, see what I put up on there, and check out some more examples. Subscribe to the channel here on YouTube for more videos as always, and I'll see you guys in the next one.